Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Douglasville Impact Community Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us this week. We've got a great show. We're going to jump right in and introduce everybody at the table. Uh, joining us this week in our news chair is Miss Allison Parker. Hello. In our event seat is Miss Tiffany Wallace. Hey, guys. And joining us in the fourth chair today is our very own Councilman Terry Miller. Glad I could be here. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Everybody have a good Memorial Day weekend. Yes. yes. Too lots short. Lots of sun. <laughs> yeah. Lots of sun and yes. lots of food. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we grilled out? You grilled out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to the Jazz Festival. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. It's great. All weekend. It's wonderful. Getting all ra- ramped up for our, our Wednesday wind downs, I see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a little research. A little research. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So we had a lot of a lot of great stuff's been going on. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right into everything we have going on. Again, I'm Jason Post. I'm your host today, and uh, thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, today we're gonna talk about everything going on in and around the Douglasville community. So well, let's start off with our news. Filling that seat today is again Miss Allison Parker. What's going on today? Hello, everyone. I'm Allison Parker, social media coordinator. I'd like to first start off by asking everyone to follow us on social media. The city of Douglasville is now social, <laughs> so you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. At City of Douglasville, Georgia, and then also on Twitter at Dville Impact, and that is D B I L L E Impact. So we look forward to all the new followers. This is what's going on this week in Douglasville. We have received the final concepts for the downtown Douglasville green space. Yay! Yay. So yeah. the 3D <laughs> renderings include um, photos and a 3D angle degree of our green space, amphitheater, and our mixed use structure. So that's a really, really great read, which you can find on our website, and then you also can find on our social media page. So this is super exciting. popular. Yes. Yeah. You can yeah. just tell by the responses on the social media yeah. how much people are looking like, forward like, to this project. Like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How many shares we've received. Yeah. It goes so wild. Everyone is happy to see that we have been able to move forward with progress for the old jail. So we're really, really excited about that. And this newest post has, like you said, really cool renderings. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's got the renderings. It's got mm-hmm. images of the stage. Yes. Of the stage area. Mm-hmm. It's got images from different angles of the whole little That's green true. space with the bridge that everybody's <laughs> crazy <Yes>. about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what some of the buildings could possibly look mm-hmm. like. They're just kind of proposed renderings of what it, what possibly could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really neat to look at. You know, it's, a, it's a beautiful green space. It and is. what would be an awesome stage and, mm-hmm. and uh, mixed retail office use Mm -hmm. and stuff down there so it's going to be a great uh, area in the community and one that you can like i said you can tell how excited everyone is about it just when you post it on social media or we post it on the website it goes crazy yes Mm -hmm. the comments and the shares and the likes Mm -hmm. it's going to be huge yes (laughs) one of the keys that also is just the transparency and this the fact that the city is sharing as much information as possible absolutely we don't want to make this something that we spring up on everybody and say, hey, by the way, this is what we're going to do. Exactly. Yeah, take it or leave it. Oh, by the way, <laughs> had public, We've had public input at, at several meetings throughout the process, and so mm-hmm. a lot of folks already know what it's going to look like ahead right. of time because we've been out, we've had been out there each uh, couple of weeks uh, having a presentation by the architects, so it's, 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 there's a reason people are excited yeah. and, and it's justifiable. Because mm-hmm. it's not like the public meetings where we're just going up and saying, hey, here's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's more those where we're inviting the public to come in and say, hey, tell us what you want. Yeah. Right. Tell us what you want to see and they've kind of shown different things mm-hmm. you know we, we like this we don't like that and stuff so it's mm-hmm. a very community built kind of project right. which is great right. it's about yeah. pressing one of the, the key aspects is we had people think about places you've been think about places you've gone and uh, your or the event spaces you've right. seen Excellent. the precedents and, and, yes. then, and then show us what you like what 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 attracted you to those places the mm-hmm. most? And we had pictures set up of different types of spaces and let people put dots on and say, okay, th- yes. this is the kind of open space right? I like. This is the kind of fountain I like. This is the kind of That's stage right. I like. So w- we had literal Im- uh, references th- to, to what people have experienced in the past. And mm-hmm. so we were able to use that that input in and, and that guided the design. And so this is what people in Douglasville want to see mm-hmm. in their public space. Right. Right. So we've come up with a really nice looking Town Green area. Yeah, it's going to so, be yeah. Yeah. Yes. Gonna be awesome. the crown I'm excited. Jewel. So excited. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um, some else? other things that we have going on this week, this past weekend was graduation season. So congratulations yes, all to all of the mm-hmm. 2019 graduates. Um, Douglas County actually did something really cool this year. They live streamed all five of their graduations. So you can go to their website and see all of the links, whether you were here locally or out of town. And so we have that link list posted on our Facebook page. They're all still live. So maybe you may have overslept left on Saturday, you didn't get a chance to catch it, you can go to our Facebook page and we have those links.
links for all of them. I live, I live viewed one of them. <laughs> my son graduated <laughs> this weekend. From, thank you. From, awesome. from uh, Douglas County High School. And um, uh, we're soon to be empty nesters. So that's, oh, a, that's a jarring uh, <laughs> adjustment that we're going to have to make. Right. But right. It was, it was, it was a really wonderful ceremony. And, and I, I, my, uh, um, my hats off to Mr. Weaver at, at Douglas County High School. He, uh, it's so evident that he really does love those kids and, and the awesome. way that he conducted the ceremony. It was very, it was emotional at times. Mm-hmm. He, he really, he really feels for what he does, and so it was. But it was exciting. Yeah. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Councilman Miller, since you mentioned you have a graduate, we are doing a very special graduation contest on our Facebook page. So we hope to see your graphic or your image of your son. Um, we want to see all the graduation mm-hmm. pictures from anyone who graduated from a Douglas County school. It could be being promoted to the next grade. It could be graduating from college. We want to see your images. And one lucky winner will receive a $50 gift card to Fabiano. So be sure to post those pictures, and you can find that on our Facebook page. We just want to see the graduation photos and celebrate anyone and everyone. to be celebrated. Yeah, it's a great season. Such a great season. Indeed. Um, next up is our lane closures that you've probably seen. I'm sure everyone is happy about this. <laughs> everyone on loves I, those. Right. <laughs> on <laughs> I-20 West between Lee Road and Highway 5. We're told that they are supposed to be completed by the end of this week, Friday, May 31st. Mm-hmm. However, we will be sure to keep you updated <laughs> on all of our social yes. media pages and also on our website. Um, and then the last thing we want to do is highlight sports. We've had some great things going on in our schools. So the Chapel Hill High School girls track team were the 2019 state champions for the 4A division, which is awesome for track and field. Um, and then some honorable mentions, the Chapel Hill boys track team were the state runner-ups. That's Very awesome. Fine. And then they weren't the only ones to place. New Manchester's boys and girls track team finished third place in our in the 6A division, and Alexander finished fourth in 6A. So we have a lot of great things going on in sports and um, here in Doug- Douglasville, Douglas County, but we definitely want to make sure we highlighted all of those. So. Very and cool. as a former trackster myself, <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing that. Yay, track and field, triple jump, and long yes, jump. Yes, they are doing awesome. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Yay, so, and, and we field. invite you to share your great news and your impact with us via our social media pages and also mm-hmm. on our website. We'd love to spotlight you. Nice. Very cool. Good, Good things. Well, it's my turn. So uh, as Douglasville turns, here we go. So uh, this weekend, we have the Hydrangea Festival that's coming up June 1st and 2nd. It'll, it will be at Douglas County High School, and it's from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. both days. So uh, it's a great event, well attended. It's well established. Uh, you can learn a lot, and there are a lot of uh, great things going on that weekend. They have the Kids Zone. Um, they'll have uh, some talks by their uh, local um gardening experts as well um and of course you know the the judging of the the best hydrangeas so <laughs> don't want to miss that so that is uh this weekend coming up and we also have food truck mondays yay Woo-hoo. everyone's looking forward to that <laughs> so and that starts uh june 3rd so it runs june 3rd through Ju- june 24th and uh it will be at the old pd and june 3rd 10th and 17th it's 11 a.m to 2 p.m so lunch hours and then on the 24th it is 5 p.m to 8 p.m uh, all at the same location so um, if you can't make it to the lunch crowd you can make it for the dinner offering and that will be on the 24th uh, and then we have uh, the public the parks public concept meetings and that is june 4th and 5th so June 4th, it will be at the Golden Memorial uh, United Methodist Church, and that's from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then June 5th uh, at Fairhaven Baptist Church uh, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So uh, everyone, this is a time for you to, you know, come out and see and get involved uh, with uh, what the uh, what Parks is uh, coming up with uh, their um, their upcoming uh, concept for the local parks in the right. area. So uh, it's good to be informed. So come out both days, Golden Memorial United Ma- Methodist Church <coughs> on the 4th, 5 to 630, June 5th, Fairhaven Baptist Church. 7 to 8 p.m. And this information is also on our website as well, so you guys can find that there. And this is the same thing we were talking about with the downtown master plan, with the parks redesign processes. They're Mm -hmm. having all these meetings to make sure that the community can come out. Indeed. Mm -hmm have their say and say, hey, here's what we want to see. Here's what we would like. So again, we we don't come Mm -hmm. at you in the end and say, here's what we're putting in. They're like, well, that's not what we want in our community. Indeed. So this is your opportunity. 
Yes. Come we out. We want you to come out. So come out. Absolutely. Yes, we have two nights, so please. And get informed, get involved. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you can't, if you can't make the meetings, you know, you can always um, contact our Parks Department just to find out, you know, what's going on and everything. So absolutely. readily available. We want to we want to see you there. <laughs> and on June fifth starts Wednesday wind down. Woo. Yay. <laughs> our next <laughs> series. So June fifth through August fourteenth. Eleven Wednesdays. It's an eleven date series and it will be held at O'Neill Plaza. And um, it was previously held at Hunter Park, but we're now moving back to O'Neill Plaza now that it has uh, the redevelopment is complete and we're we're back home. And again the dates June fifth through August fourteenth. 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. So come out, enjoy, enjoy some great music after work. It's a great midweek pep, <laughs> uh, you know, pep up, you know, because we only have two more days. So we made it to Wednesday. <laughs> we can make it We're to Friday. There. Almost Everyone there. Everyone has been Wednesday excited about Wednesday. Yes, yeah. yeah. so absolutely. Social media, yeah. I'm getting so many shares yes. and comments and likes on Wednesday wind down. So I'm really looking so forward to it. So it's here. Absolutely. It's coming yeah. next Wednesday. Wednesday nights are going to be exciting. In yes. Fill this summer. Yeah. Definitely. They're going to be packed out. The crowds, they come out for the series. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. They're waiting so, for it. So, yeah, if, you, if, you ha if you're regularly down here for a Wednesday... Mm -hmm. You, uh, you want to go here early and uh, go enjoy one of our restaurants yes. downtown and then bring They'll your chairs out. And yes. yes. Sit back, relax, and enjoy some music. And yeah. mm -hmm. like I said, people are going to turn out for these. It's, yes. It's, uh, it's always a huge turnout for these uh, concert series. Indeed. Good music, mm -hmm. good entertainment. And like I said, we always mm -hmm. got good food down here. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So the time has arrived, everyone. So get your, you know, make sure mm. you're packed and ready. You know, you don't, you don't want to have to go home after work and get your, get your stuff. No, we want you to come here. Just make sure you prepack on Tuesday, so we'll see you right. on Wednesday. <laughs> uh, so, and then uh, we have on the 13th, there is a community enrichment um, uh, just get meeting with the PD, and that will be at Hollis Street, and that's from 7 p.m. Uh, to 9 p.m. And this is part of their regular community engagement series. So, um, again, that, that's the PD community enrichment on the 13th. And then on the 15th, we have the Juneteenth celebration by our BHE organization, and that will be also on O'Neill Plaza and uh, part of Church Street. And that's from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's all day through um, in the downtown area. So it'll be fun. We'll have vendors, uh, music, and entertainment. So, yes, it'll be Hopefully it'll be it won't fun be week. too hot. Right. You know, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's June. So, <laughs> and we live in the South. So, you know, it's just. Prime time. Prime right. Time. Just bring your little personal <laughs> fan. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> and a little towel to, you know, yes. wipe the sweat. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. But it should be a fun event. Yes, it's yeah. good. Good thing. So, Definitely. that'll take us uh, awesome. to, like, the mid of June. So, yeah, Ooh. that's what I have. Always a lot of stuff going on Absolutely. in the downtown. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank Always. you, Tiffany. All right. Peace. And that brings us to our special guest today, Mr. Councilman Terry Miller, is joining us today to talk about all the awesome things happening with the City Council mm -hmm. right now. And more particularly, some of the things that you've been do doing over the last uh, few weeks. You've, you've taken a couple of trips yes. as a uh, City Council representative to some, some special things. And you can tell us a little about, about uh, the information you've brought back to make Douglasville better, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about, first off, tell us a little bit about you. Who you are, how long have you been on the council, and uh, uh, well, then we'll talk about some of your actually, uh, okay. recent trips. We use the word special before. I don't know if the special is the right word. I mean, <laughs> You're in that special chair. You're always special. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no, I, this, I'm, I'm serving in my second term on city council. I was elected uh, originally back in the old days, back in 2007, and served for four years. And I stepped off council for a few years, and then uh, came back in 2017 and was elected again. Did my s Same same place but different ward number though is the <laughs> maps got redrawn i was i was in ward right. five back then now i'm in ward one even though my house is still exactly in the same spot <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh yeah we, we we've been uh we've been doing some interesting stuff lately um i was i had the honor uh, actually last year last fall of going to los angeles for the national league of cities um and then this past uh, about a month ago less than less than a month ago I joined the Chamber of Commerce and a number of other um, representatives in the city of Douglasville and Douglas County uh, to visit York County, South Carolina. Now, the reason we went there was sort of a, as a fact-finding mission, but primarily we, we chose th that location because uh, Rock Hill, the city of Rock Hill, which is the county seat of York County, has the same location relative to its big city, which is Charlotte, as <laughs> Douglasville does to Atlanta. Right. Um, it's on the opposite side of the or I should say it's it's on the far side of the airport mm -hmm. okay. so there's the air uh, I can't remember the name of the airport in Charlotte but their international airport is between Charlotte and Rock Hill and just mm -hmm. the way sort of Hartsfield is kind of sort of between 
Douglasville and Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So had the same relationship. Um, not exactly the same size, but fairly close. There are about 60,000 people. Um, and they've had an industrial past that they're trying to work beyond. But they've done a lot of interesting things there. And we got a very, very good tour of the city and the, some of the surrounding areas. Uh, and we got to see a lot of what they're doing there um, that's really transformed that community. One of the, the primary elements that they've introduced is, is growing small businesses. And they've got a very strong entrepreneurship program and, and a number of incubators that they've set up that, that they're taking advantage uh, of a lot of the, the inherent knowledge that's, that's homegrown in that area. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to see a lot of that. And then they've, they've had issues with their downtown over the years. And they, had, they, they made a few mistakes in the past. They, they, one particular was kind of striking. They had, back in the 70s, when a lot of people were making uh, urban mistakes, they, <laughs> they decided to enclose their main street. <laughs> They yeah. actually built a roof over the main street from one end to the other, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. A, a rather okay. impractical okay. notion, but right. for some reason, some <laughs> theorists had this idea that that was a great idea. And make it because they were they were thinking they could compete against the mall. So let's right. make our downtown sure. like see. a mall. Okay. Well, that's not a good premise to start it's with. Kind of the underground so, Atlanta kind of concept. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so it, it, it instead of attracting people to to the it downtown, attracted. repelled them. Yes. <laughs> and so they back in the '80s, they had to fix their mistake and spend several million dollars more. To yes. demolish the roof over the down over yeah. the, the main street, so to get back and and, and it's a very charming little downtown. Mm -hmm. and they've done a wonderful job. Um, so there was a lot of, a lot of things that we can bring back from that community in terms of how they how they rallied around and, and has really propelled that. Um, and then about two weeks ago, I, I was uh, had the very good fortune of going joining the um, Atlanta Regional Commission's Link program, uh, and we visited my hometown, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Uh, which was a tremendous personal experience for me. Uh, it was very emotional, and in some, on certain levels, having grown up there and then mm -hmm. moved to Georgia back in the 1990s, um, what fascinated me is that we were hearing a lot of stories about the city and um, its history, uh, things that I already knew, okay? Mm -hmm. Talking about the industrial past. It's everybody right. has an image of Pittsburgh when you think of it in your mind. You think of smoky, dark, polluted, mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was the, that was yeah. the city yeah. back right. in the pre-war okay. period. Right. Uh, there were there were comments that you know, office workers would would bring two shirts with them when they go to work because you if you were wearing a white shirt by lunchtime it was gray from the pollution in the air so you would change your shirt to have a clean shirt you would put your headlights on, on if you drove around during the daytime because it was so polluted there, there, there was so much smog in the air um, there was a famous writer, I can't remember which one it was, who called Pittsburgh, hell with the lid off. <laughs> um, because of the industry, there was, uh, there was fire coming out of, you know, out of the, the now, f I will say, to our credit, Pittsburgh, ne Pittsburgh's rivers never caught on fire like Cleveland's. <laughs> no, no, no disrespect to Cleveland. I, 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 I like but if that's your bragging point, <laughs> never our rivers never caught on fire. If your bragging point is that our rivers haven't caught on fire yet, yeah. Yeah. you got to start from somewhere. <laughs> right. You do. And that's a nice start. For <laughs> hey, we, our rivers, rivers are non-flammable. <laughs> you but got that going for you, right. which is nice. But they, 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 they really, I mean, Pittsburgh was at a very low point back in, 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 the, in the 1930s mm -hmm. and 40s. And, uh, but it, 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 it had such incredible economic success, but it came at a cost. Mm -hmm. In Pittsburgh, yes. you, you know, everybody knows it was associated with steel. The steel industry was mm -hmm. the major industry. Sure. And here's the statistic that blows my mind away. Think about this. In, in the, right, right around the post-war period, around the 1940s and 50s, the Pittsburgh region produced one quarter of the world's steel. Wow. Not mm -hmm the area, not the country, is the world steel. Yeah. A quarter of the world steel was produced in that one region, very small area. And, and there was a reason why the, the Soviet Union had targeted that during the Cold War. Had, had, mm -hmm. had it come to becoming a hot war, Pittsburgh would have gotten wiped off the map, and that would have destroyed the economy yeah. of the United States. Right. It wasn't like you know, that Pittsburgh was producing a quarter of the world's paper clips or you know, <laughs> uh, you know, newsprint or whatever. It was, it was a, steel, a fundamental industry yes. right. to the economic Absolutely. engine of this country. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you, if you work in a skyscraper, there's a good chance that that steel in that building came from Pittsburgh. If you mm -hmm. drive over a bridge, that steel came from Pittsburgh. Right. So there was this tremendous economic success and engine, but it was coming at a horrendous cost. Mm -hmm. And in the 1940s, the mayor of Pittsburgh at that time, David Lawrence, got together with the, the CEOs of about 30 of the different companies and made it a major decision that changed the fate of history of this country, even more so than in just about any other major, what they call Rust Belt cities. So we're talking about Cleveland, Buffalo, right. Gary, mm -hmm. uh, all the, these cities that, that are, had, had went and declined, right. Detroit, another good example. 
they decided that they were going to make a change. They were going to fix the city. And it had to do with primarily civic pride. That they, these were people f who grew up in this town and decided they, they couldn't stand the fact that their city was a laughing stock. And so they decided that they were going to impose upon themselves taxes and regulations to clean up the air and to clean mm -hmm. up the water. And by the 1960s and 70s, nobody recognized the city anymore because you could see. <laughs> <laughs> you could see from one hill to the other. Uh, it, it, it had transformed the city miraculously. Literally. So you had clean water, you had clean air. But the city, but the problem that they still had, hadn't solved was the economy. Mm -hmm. Because Pittsburgh was completely devoted to steel. And so by the mm -hmm. 1980s, the steel industry started to go into decline was, as cheaper imports were coming into the country as uh, other co countries were becoming more competitive in that industry, Pittsburgh's economy started to decline. And then it went down very rapidly by the time I was coming out of high school. When, when I was a kid, growing up in the 70s, if you were a boy, you knew what your future was. You were going to go work in the steel mill. You know, I would say it like a Pittsburgh yeah. steel mill. <laughs> say steel mill, not steel mill, steel mill. But you were going to work in the steel industry somehow. You were going to go, you were going to follow your father. Mm -hmm. That's where you, and you were going to make a good, a good, Money so doing that. They, 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 they were, yeah. The steel industry was unionized, and, and folks, uh, they had very good contracts. And you were going to go and work in those mills, and you were going to make a good living, provide your family. The mother was going to stay home. She didn't have to work. Mm -hmm. And so that was the life. That was expected. But right around the time I was graduating from high school, that's all changed. And suddenly the mills started closing one after another, and it devastated that area. Uh, we're talking with the little towns. Think of, imagine if Douglasville depended upon a major steel mill that was providing the economy and suddenly 10,000 people were thrown out of work. Wow. Right. What would this community do? Mm. Well, that was, that was repeated in dozens of communities all over the Pittsburgh Definitely. region. Mm -hmm. It was devastated by that. And so Pittsburgh had to come up with a way to, to not just rebound, but survive. Mm -hmm. A lot of little communities didn't survive. There, I, I know of several towns, so there was one north of where I grew up uh, called Farrell, which literally got wiped off the map when their mm -hmm. steel mill closed. Mm -hmm. they, they, they literally bulldozed the entire town. There's wow. nothing left to it. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, but Pittsburgh made certain decisions back in the 50s and 60s that sort of planted the seeds of its future success. Mm -hmm. They started integrating the universities into the community. University of Pittsburgh in particular and Carnegie Mellon University mm -hmm. started programs that seemed insignificant at the time but had transformed not just the city but are starting to transform the country. Mm -hmm. right. Pitts the University of Pittsburgh started a biomedical research program and Carnegie Mellon started investigating artificial intelligence and robotics back in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. when nobody even heard of these things. Mm -hmm. By the time the 90s came around, these programs at the universities were starting to, to come to fruition <clears throat> and you started to see entrepreneurs come along and started little companies were mm -hmm. developing suddenly bigger companies and, and companies bigger than that say. and to the point where by this by today Pittsburgh is now one of the leading centers of robotics artificial intelligence and biomedical mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. all because of the universities the, the city linked up with us and, and made the investment to bring these industries about it, it, it was an act of will it wasn't an accident they they saw the yeah. future and they Definitely. and they knew that they were going to eventually going to have to to shed the dependence on the steel industry. So now, if you go to Pittsburgh, I mean, I, I, myself, we left 20 years ago, right, right in the heart of when things were at the, at the worst decline, we, because my wife and I needed to find work. Mm -hmm. you know, we, yeah. we, there wasn't much to do back then. And so we literally are, we're peril, we are, we're the story of Pittsburgh in some ways. Mm -hmm. So that's how we came down uh, to, to, to Georgia, because this is where the work was. So, but it, at that time, the industry was just starting to come back in. And, and, and so you started to see, to the point where today, if you, myself, going back to Pittsburgh, I don't even recognize parts of the city. It's become so prosperous. So one of the, the challenges the city had back when I was living there was trying to get conventions into town. I mean, like Atlanta, it's, it's, right. it's second nature here. <laughs> we had a pretty big convention center, but they couldn't get a national convention in because there were no hotel rooms. Mm, yeah. Hotels didn't, the same way we struggle here trying to get a hotel in, in Douglasville, there's no reason to build a, a major hotel in Pittsburgh because there were not, nobody's coming. It was sure. a chicken and egg kind of thing. Right, right, right. Today, there's no problem. If you want to get a major convention back then, you couldn't because there were maybe 2,000 hotel rooms in the downtown. Now there's 20,000 because wow. you, you know, the de development spurs development. I've, I've always said this. People want to see cranes. You know, if you want, you want development in your community, sure. show, yeah. some, show something happening. Right. And when right. people see cranes, it, it spurs more development, it spurs yes, confidence in the true. community. And Pittsburgh has done that in an amazing way. And so you're seeing not just um, the, the fruition of, of, of 
some you know these two schools I mentioned, but there's there's about a dozen other universities and colleges mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh. One of the one of the schools we we toured a campus at uh, Chatham University. You know, my wife actually taught at Chatham mm-hmm. back when it was Chatham College when we were there. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and since then, it's become Chatham University. But they've also built a new campus out in the North Hills, about 400 acres. They've and they've created a program uh, on sustainability. They now, in fact, offer a degree in sustainability. So you can get a degree in sustainability at Chatham University. Um, and and that, they're okay. basically showing the future. And there's so many ways that the city is now showing the future. And is that, hopefully, we, you know, we're, we're, folks who attended that can bring a lot of these lessons back. And, mm-hmm. and to me, one of the most important things was the relationship with the universities. You know, and I've been touting this for years and years that develop, that Douglasville needs to develop a stronger relationship with our local colleges. We've got, you know, we've got University of West Georgia and we've got Highlands College here. Both have a presence in town, in our community, and we need to develop and foster that relationship because that's, that's the future of this community. Education is the magic bullet, as they say. Absolutely. And we actually have a, I mean, so you mentioned Highlands um, and uh, West Georgia, but we also have a Mercer campus Mm -hmm. and uh, University of West Georgia Tech, uh, University of Phoenix. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of different, I mean, we actually have a lot of higher education in Mm -hmm. the community. So it's it would be a great thing to focus on. And Absolutely, like yeah. It's it's a it's an asset there, just waiting to be tapped into, mm-hmm. and, and 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 entrepreneurship that, that goes along with that. Um, that one of the things they developed, like, which was the par- parallel at Rock Hill, as I mentioned before, is is creating incubators, and that's something that we're actually discussing now with the chamber of Con- or the chamber of commerce mm-hmm. and the, the the Douglas County Development Authority uh, is creating an incubator for small businesses. Uh, you've got to foster that. Everybody, you've heard the statistic over and over again, the vast majority of new jobs in this country are created by small businesses, not big businesses, small businesses. Yeah. Right. And so those are, that's, that's the environment that you want to foster. That's where you want to provide leadership in, the, in that particular area. So, um, and then there was one other, uh, conf- one other breakout session that I attended. Um, they, they broke us up into a couple different things. And one was uh, on an arts district. I, I, that was my first choice. I, didn't get, I got shot out of that one, so I didn't get to go there <laughs> because I really wanted because I'm promoting the development of a, of a performing arts center here in Douglas Hill. Um, but what I did, what I, uh, the session that I got to go to was on, they called it Interfaith Communities. And, of course, everybody's familiar with the, the, the mass shooting that occurred at the Tree of Life Synagogue mm-hmm. uh, yes. last year in Pittsburgh. Which is something that, that something that horrendous tends to rip the heart out of a community. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I, I also had a personal connection to what happened there, not, not from the, the people, but the building. Uh, I, when I was working in Pittsburgh, I was a project architect for renovation to the Tree of Life Synagogue. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so I knew that building. Right. And I knew about, you know, they were telling the stories about how people were hi- hiding in certain places. That, that all struck me as very familiar. And so that was why that was my second choice. I got to, I, and I did get to go on that particular uh, venue. And one of the things that they, they, they mentioned, which again, it was fascinating to me how it paralleled the economic change in the city, which was, it wasn't like the shooting occurred and suddenly everybody got together and decided to, you know, to try, try to work out their differences and, 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 and come together as a community. Those seeds were sown years before. The, 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 the chief rabbis, the Christian and the Islamic leaders of Pittsburgh had all connected in years prior. They all had each other's phone numbers. They could call each other up, get together. So when, when this horrible thing happened, they already knew each other. They were already friends. Yeah. Yeah. They were able to just adopt, say, hey, let, right. let's, let's have a vigil. Let's get together. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Let's do X, Y, Z. And, and, and it really brought everybody together. And it, it, yeah. and it was just such a shining example of people. They may, they may have some certain fundamental differences, what we all have in common. Right. Indeed. It, was a great, it was a great lesson to learn from the city, my hometown. <laughs> and lots of great stuff to bring back yeah. to Douglasville and yeah. see how and then like you said a lot of the stuff you talked about the community being engaged and stuff like that mm-hmm. we, we we've got a great community engagement you know we go out and we talk to people all the time and just right. uh, you, you can tell that there's a heart in our community to, to be involved and, and to, get, to get involved and stuff which mm-hmm. is great uh, the other the other part was you talked about how a lot of these seeds were planted years and years and years ago for a lot of these plans. And we've said it a lot over the past few years that it takes time for a lot of these things. Right. And a lot That's of, correct. you yes. know, a lot of these master plans that we've been enacting, you know, uh, it takes time. And we've been mm-hmm. planning for years now. Nothing yes. is an accident. So you, you right. have to. In my it's field, yes. in architecture, you, you draw a plan. You don't just get in there and say, all right, we'll put a wall over there and <laughs> maybe <laughs> let the roof hang out over here. I mean, you, you get into big trouble if you try to do it Absolutely. that way. You can't well, wing it. The you Highway 92 it. project that we've been talking about, you know, it's, we're actually seeing stuff. And, you know, we're talking it's, it's still going to be a couple of years. Um, but 
they've been working on that for yeah, G-Dos, 30 right? years at, at yes. least. I mean, it's, it's been a huge, long process. Right. And that's just how they work, you know. So we know that with these master plan stuff, we're, we're already a few years into the master plan, the park master plan, the downtown master plan. So we're in a good mm-hmm. spot, especially with the downtown. We're actually about to start seeing construction and cranes yeah. and things like that happening. We're, we're, we're lucky that so. we're seeing the, the fruits of the, the labor of many years ago. And, and that's one of the aspects of planning is that you have to you have to be willing and ready to accept that you're not going to even, you may not see some <laughs> of the things that you plan for. You, you Right. There's a, there's a great story I, I remember hearing years ago about, there's this, in, in England, okay, it gives you an idea of the, the sense of culture there. The, the, the highway department wanted to build this a brand new highway coming into a little town and there was this row of like 300 year old elms that lined th- this old road and, and they were going to cut down all these trees and build this highway and into the middle of the town and, and the, the residents town were up in arms they said, no you're not going to cut down these are historic trees you're not going to cut them down mm-hmm. and so they, they wrangled around for a while and they finally came to a compromise and they that the highway department agreed that they would plant a new row of trees on both sides outside of where the new road was going to go and in 300 years, when those trees were big enough, they would cut the old elms down. <laughs> <laughs> that is long range. For you. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like the 92 project is going to be about <laughs> on that same timeline. <laughs> that's 300 year old elms. <laughs> but we are making progress there, right. so that's good. Yeah, but I know we know a lot of our projects have been in the planning phase, and we're moving into a lot of action phase. We, like we talked about the green space and the town green that's going to be coming up real soon. We know that the parks master plan. They're right. they're doing all those meetings now, so mm-hmm. that we're actually going to start seeing you know it's going to you know we, we still have a few years that we're working on things and yes, w- right. our plans aren't going to be finished in a few years we've got long-range plans as well mm-hmm. because that's that's just how it works so it's yes. we've, we've said it before it's a good time to be in Douglasville Absolutely. because a lot of stuff is about to about to start actually happening you're about to actually start seeing a lot of construction and cranes and, and new stuff coming to Douglasville it's a good time to be here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so Great. That's awesome. So it's always good to go and see what we can bring back from other cities who are doing great mm-hmm. things and how I, we can yeah. apply it here, right? Great takeaways. I, s- I, I say that, you know, the one of the best, when, when, I, when I tutor or mentor students in, in the field of architecture, I, I say, you know, you, you can read lots of stuff in books and you can, you know, look at the buildings in your town. But I said one of the most important things that you can, the way you can learn is to get out of town and travel, <laughs> see other Agreed. places. Even if you can't, you know, you can't afford to go to Europe necessarily or, or someplace yes. around the other side right. of the world, go to the next town over, go to the next state over, the mm-hmm. next county. Just see something that's a little different from where, you, every, every place is a little different. Right. And you Absolutely. can bring something back no matter where you go and go to that community and look at look at the signs. The signs might be a little different. The buildings are arranged a little differently. Their, t- their town green or their parks mm-hmm. might be a little different from what you, there's always something you can learn from, right. from other yes. places, a travel. Most important learning experience you can ever have. Absolutely. Great advice. Mm-hmm. Great awesome advice. advice from Councilman Terry Miller. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have you back like every other week to get some <laughs> little wisdom from our councilman. All right. Well, I think that uh, <laughs> should about wrap it up. We're probably way over time. <laughs> Producer Steve is probably freaking <laughs> out back there. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, that's, it, it's all good stuff, though. We never have a problem going Absolutely. over time as long as it's good stuff. And that's, that's awesome content. So I want to thank you guys all for, for coming today thank and you. for joining us. Thank you, Councilman thank you Miller, for, for, for sitting in and filling us in on everything that's going on. And thank you guys for all joining us, for listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to ask you again to uh, leave us some comments, uh, whether you're watching us on iTunes or Spotify or watching the YouTube feed. Uh, leave us a comment. Leave us some feedback. Let us know what you think of the podcast. And uh, until next time, I think that'll wrap it up. All right. We'll see you next time on Community Impact. Thank you. Bye, everyone.